Shall I talk about a bit about United? I hate to talk about football in here because I get just so upset, but um, fuck it. So as you as you guys are, are more are, are well aware, I'm a big Manchester United fan. Have been supporting these guys for a long, long time, and you know we're kind of going through a bit of a rough period at the moment, right? We're kind of in this position at the moment where it doesn't seem like there's a clear wet route out of the forest, right? We're just like lost, right? Um, everything kind of doesn't work out. We're trying to get good managers in to kind of fix a problem that doesn't work out. We're trying to sign players of a high caliber or big ticket, big ticket players or players of a big reputation. It's not certain seem to work. We're trying to sign people that are proven in the league. That doesn't seem to work. Loads of things we're doing just aren't working. And I think it kind of like come to a head when we faced Tottenham the other day on Monday Night Football and we lost 3-0, unfortunately, right? The game started off pretty well. I think everyone was surprised by Jose Mourinho's tactics. Everyone was kind of assuming he was going to play Matic in centre-back and kind of have like a five-man defence. But instead, it kind of turned into like a three at the back with Herrera behind there, right? And kind of Shaw and uh, Valencia playing as like really wide wing-backs. And it worked amazing for the first half an hour. But unfortunately, we didn't take our chances. We had a couple of chances to score, especially Lukaku who had a kind of an open goal to score into and he missed. And then you kind of knew what was happening because it was weird. When you watch them game, right? I remember there was a period where some commentators said like, oh, why is Pochettino going so crazy on the side of the bench, right? He was kicking stuff. He was remonstrating. He was really angry. And the reason why, because I think we were playing really well, but it was obvious that Tottenham are a better side than us. And as soon as they score, because we don't really have a, a defined style of play and because we're in a weird transition period and a lot of our players having beefs with the manager, it kind of felt as if Pochettino knew that if they take control of the game, they would win. But if they gave us a chance to score, that we would gain confidence and win, right? It's the same thing. I think Mourinho mentioned it after the game that got, got, scoring goals and conceding goals has a weird effect on your cardiovascular ability, right? You get a bit deflated when you, when you lose. That's why people are really shocked when teams come back 3-0 because the whole team's morale kind of drops when, you, when, you lose, when you're losing 3-0 and there's 20 minutes to go. But it takes a really extraordinary team spirit in order to kind of like, no, it's not over yet and somehow score three goals or four goals to win the game or four goals or more. So I think Pochettino had a feeling, an inkling that if they score, they'll win this game. And I kind of had a feeling that too. Like uh, the Premier League is the Premier League because you can't play shit against a Tottenham and win. You can do that in Valen You can do that uh, in Spain. You can play crap against Valencia and still sneak the win if you've got world class players in your team. But in the Premier League, it feels like even if you have world class players in your team, there is the possibility that you could get you could get a draw. It's not going to happen the same way you think. Same way when Man City went to Wolves, and everyone thought they were going to win seven 0 and it ended one one. Right, a very tight game. Uh, Wolves had a very great a great tactical plan and they kind of executed it really well and they limited Man City's chances. Um, you know, they hit the post a few times, but for the most part, it was a very very even game. But you felt as if like if Man United conceded that they were just going to lose the game, and it, exactly, it happened exactly to that T. Um, we we conceded kind of on the first corner, and it, we just basically imploded. Um, then you got to see all the cracks and holes in our team, and you got to see that as great as a plan as Jose Mourinho set out before the game, it seems as if the players aren't playing for him because the moment we went down, there wasn't a concerted effort to kind of get us back on level terms. Like we didn't have a way of playing, which is what kind of like really annoyed me when Luis Van Gaal got sacked and we got Mourinho in because. Even though Luis Van Gaal's signings, some of them didn't work out and the football was dire and we kind of, you know, were, were kind of stagnating at the time, you saw what he was trying to do, right? There were moments when we faced some of the bigger sides where we played them completely off the park. Like I remember we faced Liverpool once and we just dominated the whole game. Possession, we played great football. It was amazing to see. You saw it, it was kind of going. But with Mourinho, you kind of get the feeling or you know the fact that his style of football, his kind of managing style depends a lot on having good players, right? You look at Porto, you look at Inter Milan, you look at Real Madrid, you look at his time at Chelsea. He had the best players available to him or he was able to get the best players he position. Like, I remember there was a time at Chelsea where they had that thing of like having two, two world-class players at each position, right? Just so he can swap like for like. And that's when the whole idea came he didn't play kids because he didn't need to. He could just go out and buy ready-made talent, 25 and upwards, and just play them, right? In a position of, 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 um, of strength and then the team would win inevitably especially if he implemented his kind of tactical now in terms of defending, in terms of pressing the ball. He's very good at that, but it's very dependent on having good players. He has to have good players in order to make the system work, right? And with United, as anyone United fan knows, we don't have good players because we have a lot of dead weight in our team. We still have Smalling, Jones, uh, Young and Valencia in our defence, right? Five players who, it could be argued, all need to be shipped out, right? We then have uh, Luke Shaw, who's someone who hasn't really fulfilled his potential, but is someone who played really well. Probably the man in the match against Tottenham, actually. Great performance. Weird to say, because we lost, what, 3-0, and Lucas Moura was tearing up the pitch. But Shaw played really well for United. 
Then we have a midfield where he still contains Fellaini. It still contains Mata, who no one's really sure about. Um, then we have an up front that's a bit haberdashery, a bit cut, a bit stuck together. It doesn't really make any sense. You've got Rashford, Martial, Sanchez and Lukaku. All players that different managers would like and not like. Systems that don't really work. Then you've got Pogba, who's a marquee sign, hasn't really worked out. So, all in all, the team isn't as good as other teams that Rosemary has walked into. And it required much more of an overhaul than any other team he's ever had in his career, ever. It, it required, it's required so much work. This is, this is a proper six-year job. He needs to get a lot of players out of that club, right? But it seems as if the board has decided that he has spent so much money and we haven't been able to see any benefit from it so far in terms of leagues or Champions Leagues, right? Um, that they feel as if like he needs to get the most out of what he has now before he gets uh, given any more money. But again, like I mentioned, if you hire Jose Mourinho, you have to be under, you have to understand that he's not Louis Van Gaal. He's not going to promote Rashford from the reserves and play him, and all of a sudden you're going to find a gem. He's not. That's not his style. He doesn't do that. He signs ready-made talent and makes them play well for him. And if he doesn't have the, the tools to do that, we're not going to be good. But I also am a bit reserved on uh, have reservations on that kind of s system because. I don't want United to be that club. I don't think we can sustain that either. I don't think that's a sustainable model to make. And I don't think we can be that club, right? I think a lot of our heritage is built, even though it's mostly built on the back of Sarah Ferguson, it's built on promoting the youth, fast attacking wing play and counter attack, right? It's, it's built on exciting football, but it's also built on a brand of football that kind of uses really kind of outside of context, ordinary players, and but kind of gives them a platform to play their best, right? You look at people like John O'Shea, right? Someone who kind of was a bit average, but in that team was able to do a shift, do a role. People like Darren Fletcher, right? Who was like a, a better version of a Fellaini, right? Someone who was actually able to play football. Maybe not the highest level, but he could play different kind of role. Different, he could play in different positions all over the, all over the team and give his 100%. He's given entire all in it. And then we supplement that it was just world-class talent like Skulls, Giggs and Ronaldo. But that's how we kind of did things, right? But... It feels as if like we don't have a plan set in place, so I'm a bit nervous to say that Mourinho should go because I I, I do think that it's not going to work out. I think he's made such a rod for his own back. I think he's alienating too many players. I think he's been unable to kind of adapt to the modern footballer, right? If you're a Pogba, because Pogba's been horrible, right, since he played for us. I think he's been not he's not been consistent. He's not justified his price tag at all. We've seen the best of him in the France kit for the most part. But for United, he's been pretty average, right? He's not, he doesn't control games when he's given an option to. Even when he has like two defensive midfielders in Herrera and Matic playing alongside him and all he has to do is pick up the ball and spray all over the pitch. I, I say all he has to do, but you know, he's, he's more than capable of doing it. He's not, he can't do it. He's flat to deceive, right? For the most part. But modern day footballers like Pogba need a different kind of management style, right? I don't think they... Well, I, again, I don't know what the stories are. I'm not, I don't have any inside information. Again, I'm a nobody. But I don't think he can act... To, I don't think he can um, treat Pogba the same way he treated Luke Shaw. I don't think he put up with it. He's too big time, right? He thinks too highly of himself to put up with that kind of... Uh, um, uh, to put up with that kind of behavior from his manager in public. He won't do it at all. And if you leave the stories that Pogba is a bit distracted in Manchester, he's always out all on social media. Mourinho you know, doesn't like it. Friction in that regard. There's videos of him in Paris. I think, no, after the World Cup, uh, smoke, um, puffing on helium balloons and supposedly he has a girlfriend that does coke, allegedly. Blah, 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 blah. So there's all, these con there's all these things around him that people are saying is not that, that are kind of making him distracted. Plus, Mourinho, after the World Cup, ha threw a bit of a snide remark, which I think was unnecessary too, right? I'm sure they already had a conflict, but he threw a bit of a snide remark where he said something along the lines of like, Pogba only did well in the World Cup because he had no distractions, right? It's the World Cup. He had like, he had, he had to kind of be locked in a hotel with his teammates and he couldn't be out and about doing things. And that's where you see the best of him. Hopefully he can do the same thing in United. So kind of like a little backhanded compliment. So with all these things in place, like Mourinho, unfortunately, it's, it doesn't seem like he's a manager who can get the best out of a player like that. And Martial was kind of the same sort of player too, right? A bit, um, young players who kind of haven't achieved that much but think very very highly of themselves right and unfortunately Mourinho's kind of education as a manager has has come from you know dealing with actual real pros right which is partly the reason why Ibrahimovic did so well when he was at United right because he was able to kind of implement that kind of like hunger that kind of like professional kind of go in do your job and then outside you can do whatever you want but on the pitch you have to perform right that kind of driven desire but he doesn't have a, a Ibrahimovic anymore he doesn't have like a second manager on the pitch to kind of bring people in and make sure people behave he doesn't have that anymore so he had kind of in this weird impasse but again like i mentioned previously if you want Mourinho to succeed Mourinho has to be given the funds to buy the players that he needs to buy it's a bit checkbook managery right he has to, he's not a coach that can kind of 
um, get the best out of shit players, right? Or promote ordinary players, make them play well, or get the best out of a dead system. He can't. He needs great players. He has to have world class players. He just can't do it. Pep Guardiola did the same sort of thing in that regard, right? He got rid of Benjamin, Benjamin, uh, Bakari Sagna and Zabaleta and all those kind of guys and Gail Clichy because they weren't good enough, right? And replaced them with the players that he needed that uh, could do the job to the level that he wanted to do. And so Man United kind of needs to do that. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to say Mourinho out because the board don't know what they're doing, right? Um, Edward Woods obviously proved that with the appointments he's made from Moyes to Louis van Gaal to Mourinho. There is no common theme there. They're just following a succession plan that doesn't make any sort of sense. So if Mourinho does get fired, what are we going to do, right? He's gonna, that manager's going to come in and have to sign six more players. He's gonna have to, it's going to take him a year to get rid of the people that are on big contracts. That's not fair United too. Those ordinary players I mentioned, like Shaw, no, sorry, Smalling, Jones, Valencia, uh, Ashley Young, who's going to who's gonna sign them, right? They're on like 120 grand a, a week, supposedly, right? They've still got contracts that have like a couple of years or three years left on them. Like, it's hard to get rid of the players like that, um, especially if you don't want to terminate their contract and lose any money on it, right? So we're in a weird position, we're in a weird stage. I feel like that, again, the, the 3-0 loss to Tottenham was more than on the cards, right? It was coming. I think we kind of got away with it a little bit against Leicester. But we didn't get away against Brighton. We didn't get away against Tottenham. And now we're in a position where we kind of had to rescue our season, right? Do you remember when losing two games in a season was meant you were out of the Premier League race? Like, you, you weren't going to win the Premier League anymore. People don't really treat it as that sort of, like, cutthroat anymore. But remember that being a thing. If you lost more than two games, you're done. Like, it's over. Um, so maybe that ruthlessness with the top teams isn't really there because the teams from fourth to, like, tenth are so good now, right? So they can... It's never a, it, there is no gimmies anymore. Even the, even relegated sides for the end of the season, it's not a gimme because you need the points. They need the points to stay alive. You know what I mean? To like actually keep people need the points to, stay, to keep their job. It's that serious. So the league is like a, a weird place now where like the top teams have to really, really, really play well in order to kind of win. And you have to have the best players available. And if you don't have that, it doesn't happen. And you have a manager who's kind of beefing with the players, beefing with the board. Like it's just a whole clusterfuck of shit that's happening at the moment right it just doesn't nothing seems to be working and you can see it like the moment we go behind the players that should be kind of performing for us at like the Pogba's and stuff and the Sanchez's are just not being able to kind of pull us out of the rut and I guess there's a part of me that's kind of happy that's happening because I think it would be a bit of a cop out be a bit of a an easy cop out for some people if we did get out of a rut because Sanchez came on and scored like a 35 yard scream I don't think that's what we need we need to kind of actually go down to the dark place and realize that we are not where we need to be because of the infrastructure that we have set up in the club, right? We don't really have footballing people doing the footballing side of things, right? We have chief executives that are more business-oriented business, business oriented than Ed Woodward who are kind of trying to handle both sides of the business and they can't. Um, and we, have a, we don't have, we have a plan in place, a blueprint of what we want to do, right? Mark specking out the next five years because I think, again, I'm, I'm saying it's going to take us, us another five seasons to get back where we need to get to, like actual dominance, like Man United being the Man United of old, not flirting with, you know, finishing top four or pushing to finish second and shit. No, actually challenging because even though we finished second, we just finished second. We, did, we, we didn't look like we were going to win the league at any point in the season, right? Maybe apart from November-ish time. We don't, we don't really, we don't really challenge it for the league. No one, no one actually believe that we were going to challenge Man City. But I think it's going to take us five seasons to get back to that level. Honestly, five seasons to get back to that level, but it requires a plan. It requires someone to sit down, footballing people to get footballing people in charge to kind of to look at the youth system. What we're doing with the reserves? What we're doing with under twenty ones, under twenty twenty threes? What's going on with the under eighteens? What's going on with guys like Tahiti Chong? What's going on with these guys? Like, how are we pr trying to plan that to progress them into the squad? What's going on with the players that we have already signed? Like, we have to do that. We have to manage that. Or if not, we're going to be stuck in a doldrums. We're going to end up like how Liverpool were a few seasons back, or AC Milan. Uh, another really bad example of a big club that kind of just didn't handle um, just didn't handle the kind of transition of not winning stuff really well and we need to kind of handle it but again I don't have much faith in the club because I think like, money is always the driving force and if Mourinho is able to kind of make us finish third um, in a very tight seat because imagine, I'd imagine I'm, I've got a feeling this season is going to be a lot tighter I don't think Man City are going to run away with it they did last season I think it's going to be a lot tighter so if we finish third and there's like eight points be between um, third and first I think they'll see that as a successful season we've got top four we guaranteed Champions League funds will be made available again for me to send a couple of players we'll still have the dead weight left in our team like there'll be things that happen but I think we need to kind of like the shit needs to hit the fan rule for us to change, but I don't really want it to happen because I'm a, I'm a fan of the club. I don't want us to lose another game or to lose a succession of games and then we have to get handed out. I don't think that's the way he should be going out either, but he also needs to kind of like find a way to kind of correct it and fix this because, you know, 
he, he makes eight changes or six changes in the game against Tottenham and then I'm sure there's going to be another round of changes again like I, we don't know who our best centre-back pairings are Lindelof looks like he's absolutely scared to play football Smalling and Jones are as average as they always seem it's just like an absolute clusterfuck I don't know what's going to happen but we're in a bad position right now um, I don't think I don't sure how, how much better it's going to get and if it does get better then so be it but I don't really have good feelings or hope regarding the season overall but anyway um I guess that by me, me again. I don't like to talk about football because it just bums me out again. But you know, say love you. You gotta get these things off your chest. <laughs>